Lesson 11.3b, Using Multiple Samples to Compare Populations. A random sample is a sample in which each individual or object in the entire population that is being surveyed has an equal chance of being selected. Like getting heads or tails when flipping a coin, picking a playing card from a full deck, or rolling a number cube. Many different random samples are possible for any given population, and their measures of center can vary. So the measures of center would be the mean or average, or the median. And using multiple samples can give us an idea of how reliable any inferences or predictions we make are. Take a look at this box plot. We have our lowest value, our greatest value, and we have the first quartile, the median, which is the second quartile, and the third quartile. It's the number of books read during summer for some students. And the median is the point through which a vertical line has been drawn for each box plot. That's the median. And the shape of the box plot is used to visualize whether the data values are evenly distributed. And the whiskers and the two parts of the box will be about the same length. So these whiskers are, well, they're not that different from each other. This one's one unit long. This one is two units long. And each side of the box are about the same size or grouped more to one side of the median. So we might see the median like way over here, or we might see the median way over here, then it wouldn't be so evenly distributed. But because the median is pretty much near the center of this box, we know it's evenly distributed with, along with the information that the whiskers are the way they are. They're about the same length. A group of about 200 students in grade seven and about 200 students in grade six were asked how many books did you read this summer? Responses from one random sample from 10 students in grade 7 and one random sample from 10 students in grade 6 are summarized in the box plots. So here's grade 7 and here's grade 6. So it's the number of books that they read during the summer. We can see that for grade 7, somebody just read one book. Someone read nine. For grade 6, someone read 2, someone read 10, and we can see the boxes are the same length. We can see they're kind of shaped the same. They're a little shorter whiskers on this side, a little longer whiskers on this side. So how can we tell which grade read more books during the summer? We can see their least value and greatest values, and we can see their median numbers but there's a lot of overlap between these two box plots. The median is higher for grade seven with a great deal of variation. So this median is six, this median is only five. To make an inference for the entire population of 200 seventh graders and 200 sixth graders, it's helpful to consider how the medians vary among multiple samples. This was only one sample from each grade. This was just one sample of 10 students from each grade out of 200 seventh graders and 200 sixth graders. These box plots show how the medians from 10 different random samples vary for each group. So this is 10 different random samples. One random sample was 10 students, so that means 10 random samples would be a hundred students. And these are the box plots we got for seventh grade and sixth grade. These are the medians of 10 random samples. And the medians vary less than the actual data. Half of grade six medians are within one book read of three books. So here's grade six. The median is three and it's got for the first quartile a two and a four for the third quartile. See how they're within one red book? One book has been read, you know, away from the median. And if you look at grade seven, the medians are within one or two books read of six books. And although the distributions overlap, the middle halves, the length of the boxes, the middle halves 
of the data barely overlap. Look at that. Grade 7 read more books this summer. It's very easy to see that. By increasing the sample size and plotting their medians, we can see the difference. But in the box plots with one sample size, in these box plots, the samples are small with a lot of overlap between the grades. So they aren't helpful to know which grade read more books during the summer. It's more difficult to make any convincing comparisons. Whenever box plots have a lot of overlap in their distributions, it makes it more difficult to make any convincing comparisons. So here we have three box plots, A, B, and C. It's easier to compare A to B because they're not overlapping as much, or A to C than it would be to compare B to C. We're now finished with Module 11, and we're going to be moving on to Module 12, which is about experimental probability. We're going to be talking about finding the likelihood of an event. Keep trying your best, and join me for the next module. Bye.